Okay, in this video we're gonna look at the following result uh, regarding linear congruence congruences. So in a previous video we proved that if the GCD of AN divides B then AX is congruent to B mod N has a solution and via an example we notice that there are potentially more than one solution. So uh, here we'll find out exactly how many solutions there are. There are the GCD of AN solutions and each of these solutions are separated by N over the GCD of AN. So let's get going with the proof. Good. So um, let's notice the following. So let's uh, set D equal to the GCD of A and N just for ease of notation. And let's also suppose that um, X naught, so let's suppose that X naught is a solution to the linear uh, congruence. Good. So the next thing we want to do is uh, let's consider the following. Let's consider uh, the number X naught plus um, N over D times K for K N Z. Good. So these are all um, integers that are distance a multiple of N over D from X naught. Okay, good. And what we want to show is that all of these are solutions to the linear congruence. And if we can do that, then we've shown the second part of this statement. In other words, that they're separated by N over the GCD, which we're writing as N over D. And once we've done that, we can show that there are only GCD of A, N of these. Good, so let's consider this. And what we want to do is plug this in to the linear congruence and make sure that it's satisfied. So now, uh, let's notice the following. If we take A times X naught plus N over D K, that will give us A X naught plus, um, plus A over D times K times N. Good. Now the important thing to notice is that since D is equal to the GCD of A and N, that means A over D is a natural number. So it's a whole number, which makes A over D times K an integer. Good. Which makes this whole thing congruent to A X naught mod n because we've multiplied, or sorry, we've added a multiple of n to this, which is like adding zero, but then since x naught is a solution, this is congruent to b mod n. So let's see what we have. So that means that x naught plus n over dk is a solution. So x naught plus n over dk are solutions to AX is congruent to B mod N. And maybe notice that these are separated by N over D. Um, in other words, N over the GCD of A and N because we can take k to be any integer. So we take it equal to 1, then we have x naught, and then one more multiple of n over the GCD, and so on and so forth. Good. So now I'll clean up the board and we'll prove that there are in fact only GCD of a n of these solutions. Okay, good. So the next question is, we know that a Sorry, we know that x naught plus n over dk um, is a solution for all k in the integers. And then the next question is how many are incongruent? In other words, how many distinct solutions do we get? 
So what we'll do, we'll start off taking two solutions and see what they have to satisfy for them to be congruent. So let's suppose that x naught plus n over d k1 is congruent to x naught plus n over d k2 mod n. Good. Now we want to find conditions on K1 and K2 so that these are um, congruent and then we can extrapolate to find out how many incongruent solutions there are. Okay, good. So it's easy to see that moving things around we'll get the following. So we'll get N over D K1 minus K2 is congruent to 0 mod N. Okay, great. So, now what does that tell us? So, that tells us the following. So, that tells us that K1 minus K2 is a multiple of D. Okay, good, because we want this whole thing to be a multiple of N. So, if this whole thing needs to be multiple of N, then K1 minus K2 has to be a multiple of D. So this tells us that, um, in other words, D divides K1 minus K2. So being a multiple is the same thing as D dividing K1 minus K2, which tells us that K1 is congruent to K2 mod D, but I'll go ahead and write the GCD of A and N because we're getting down to the end. So K1 minus K2 is, sorry, K1 is congruent to K, K2 mod the GCD of A and N. So um, the answer to how many incongruent solutions are there is the same thing as the answer to how many residues are there modulo the GCD of A and N. And so that tells us that there are GCD of A and N incongruent solutions. Good, so we know how many solutions there are and we know the separation between the solutions. Okay, good, so I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at an example. Okay, so let's look at this linear congruent. So we have 15x is congruent to 20 uh, mod 25. So uh, we know that there's a solution um, because of the following, because the GCD of, let's see, A and N, so which is 15 and 25 equals 5, which divides B, which divides 20. Good. So because of that, we know there's a solution. And then, furthermore, we know how many solutions there are. So we know that there are GCD of 15, 25. So there are five solutions by the proposition that we just uh, proved. Good. And then, um, uh, furthermore, we know that these are separated by n over this GCD, so 25 divided by 5. So that means that these are separated by um, 5. So that means if we can find one of the solutions, then we can find all of the solutions. So let's see how to do that. So let's see, here we can write 15 as 3 times 5. So this is the same thing as 3 times 5x equals, and then we can write 20 as 4 times 5 mod 25. And then recall from a previous um, example that uh, this has a solution exactly when um, 3x equals 4 mod 25 uh, divided by um, 25 divided by the GCD of uh, 25 and 5. So uh, this is the same thing as 
3x is congruent to 4 mod 25 divided by the GCD of 5 and 25. So I've got a previous video where we prove that statement. Okay, good. So uh, that means this is the same thing as 3x is congruent to 4 mod 5. Okay, good. Now uh, we just need to find a first solution. So at this point, we can guess because we're modulo a pretty small number. So 3 times 1 is obviously 3. 3 times 2 is 6, which is 1, so that won't work. 3 times 3 is 9, but 9 is 4 mod 5. So that means the answer is x equals 3. So now we have one solution. Um, so that means one of our solutions is x is congruent to 3 mod 25. We can bring that back up to the original. And from here, we can get the rest of them. So there are five solutions, each separated by five. So that means x is congruent to eight. Mod 25 is the solution. x is congruent to 13. Mod 25. x is congruent to 18. Mod 25. And finally, x is congruent to 23. Mod 25. These are all solutions. And that finishes this example.